Hi, a while back I got this really nice Tektronix 2225 oscilloscope and I uh, did some basic uh, checks on it, well, uh, fair, reasonably comprehensive uh, checks anyway and found that the vertical and the um, horizontal uh, 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 calibration was slightly out. So I've got the service manual for it. I thought we'd do a bit of a teardown and uh, see if we can uh, tweak this thing uh, just a little bit to uh, bring it back into cow. So let's go. To take it apart, there's only a couple of uh, Torx screws on the side here. I don't think they're original. There's one missing, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. But uh, you undo those screws and it should just slide off. Um, that's how most scopes work, so let's give it a go. And if you're going to put your scope uh, face down on the bench, just beware of the controls and how far they protrude. Usually they protrude uh, further than the screen like that, but uh, these ones on the old uh, tech scopes are pretty darn robust, but just be aware that uh, that can be an issue. And there's a couple of little uh, catches on here like that, and uh, you get those off, and we should be able to slide that sucker off. Yep, upside down. Ta-da! There we go. And there you have it. That's inside the Tech 2225 scope, and we'll take a look at in uh, much more detail, but the first thing I noticed when I opened this is that uh, the lack of uh, lack of uh, physical control uh, rods like this one here uh, going back to various circuit boards. And if you've um, ever opened up uh, lots of old scopes like this, I just loved the design that went into them because all the controls on the front would have these lovely mechanical rods going back to vertical PCBs at the back and all sorts of things and then they'd have right angle ones which ah oh, it was just beautiful but uh, all we've got here is um, most of the uh, controls here are mounted on the front panel there's a couple which uh, go through the vertical uh, ones here go through we'll take a look at the horizontal goes through to a ganged switch there and there's only the one rod uh, that's for the uh, focus adjustment which goes all the way back to the um, uh, supply at the back but yeah apart from that it's not as elegant it's more modern than uh, some of the older traditional scopes so I just find it it's not really as exciting or as sexy now it's a uh, full board uh, construction here. We've got uh, the front panel one we mentioned which uh, holds the front panel controls. We've got the uh, vertical amplifier uh, panel and then it does um, some horizontal as well. Probably some time based uh, stuff because that's the horizontal going into there. Uh, we've got a high voltage uh, power supply vertical board under there. I love that they've got this um, plastic uh, uh, plastic protection thing up the front for uh, people who uh, start poking around inside these things. Everything high voltage is under there. And uh, then we've got the main, one main large board on the bottom of the case. And if you flip it up here like this and take a look at the bottom, you can see that's one large board. I love it. And once again, we've got this uh, high voltage uh, plastic um, plastic protection plate here with high voltage warning on it. It's nice design. I love it. There you go. We've got uh, AC line potential and CRT uh, high voltages under that. So uh, take that sucker off at your own risk. And we've got some uh, 100 volt uh, DC stuff around here. Nice big uh, danger warning sign again. But apart from that, they've done a really good job of isolating those high voltage uh, uh, components. And so you can just uh, dick around on the back, calibrate, troubleshoot, do whatever um, with the scope operational. And up in the corner here, we have a little bodge resistor. Well, it's not a little bodge resistor. It's uh, quite a decent size, um, a couple of watt. Uh, beastie and it's um that's obviously um either some sort of repair or some sort of um you know uh, i don't think it's a factory mod um but it, it may be i don't know anyone else with a uh with the same scope is your one got the same bodge resistor on it and there's one thing i really love about this scope not only the double-sided layout which we'll talk about in a minute but it's all uh through hole which means that uh, we can access all components on the back but every component on the back of this board 
they've put the silk screen designators uh, and the markings from where to where that all of the resistors and the and the various uh, ICs and test points as well. It's just it's brilliant. I love it. Somebody's put a lot of effort into the layout of this board and my hat's off to them. And of course the beautiful part about the double sided layout is that you can access every single component on here. You can troubleshoot everything. So when you've got all the information on here with the, uh, with the schematic diagram and the service manual, you can do everything at the back of the scope. You don't even have to uh, probe, you know, get down inside the guts of the scope. You can just probe everything from the back. It's brilliant. Why isn't all gear designed like this? I love it. As for the layout itself, it's just beautiful. If you've ever laid out a board of this complexity, like a double-sided through-hole board like this, of this sort of complexity with this number of components, you'll realize the amount of work, effort, and sheer talent and artistry which goes into laying out a board like this. It's, just, it's brilliant. Now, the true test of any uh, double-sided board layout to see if it's been laid out uh, properly is how many uh, jumper links that you can see in here and well I'm struggling to see any uh, at all there's a couple down here but it looks like they're they're actually deliberately in there as uh, voltage test points and they're labeled um, as such or voltage links so that you can uh, actually disconnect um, each uh, voltage rail and perhaps uh, measure the current as well they may actually be uh, current um, measurement shunts maybe that's what they're actually for if you see in there there we go We've got one down in there, and uh, it's there. There was enough room for a trace to go in there, but they decided to add a link, and they've labelled it plus 8.6. There's another one here, and there's all the way along here. I reckon they're designed for uh, ease of servicing and ease of troubleshooting, so that you can actually uh, cut those links and actually uh, measure the current on that particular rail. But as for the links, I'm having a hard time actually uh, finding any on this board. It's not easy to look uh, under the vertical uh, board here. We'd have to uh, take that out. But uh, really, I, you know, I'm struggling to see any links. So this thing has been laid out with a hell of a lot of talent and care and blood, sweat and tears, I'm sure. Now there's one thing I'm not noticing inside this scope, and this is something you've got to really uh, look for, in uh, vintage uh, scopes, especially Tektronix ones, they're a bit famous for it, is uh, using custom um, hybrid uh, modules and things like that. But it looks all fairly uh, fairly discrete stuff. I'm not recognizing uh, some of the numbers of uh, some of the ICs offhand, but uh, they're, they're certainly not um, custom hybrid type things. Although uh, you could say that this little one down in here is a little on the vertical board there, that custom resistor, um, that looks like a thick film resistor hybrid there, but yeah, you know, apart from that, it all, it uses pretty much all uh, discrete circuitry, transistors, basic um, op amps and uh, digital, um, you know, uh, 4000 series logic ICs and so on. Now I just checked and that uh, MC Motorola MC3346 uh, for example is a transistor array. It's got uh, a differential pair plus a couple of discrete uh, transistors in there. So you know they've decided to use an IC instead of that maybe for uh, thermal matching or uh, you know uh, something like that. But um, yeah apart from that uh, if you if it uses all sort of you know more discrete components on here then it makes it much more serviceable. Uh, because if you get one of the uh, more advanced uh, tech scopes, for example, and they've got one of those uh, hybrid modules in there, if that fails, you are screwed. You've got to find somebody who, you know, um, uh, still has uh, that board. But even if, say, that transistor array there failed and you couldn't get it anymore, then the chances are you could actually uh, bodgy up a circuit to actually replace it. And they've been smart here. The uh, trim pots that um, are obscured by boards on the uh, on the top side here, they've actually drilled holes in the back side of the board so that you can adjust the pot through the back like that. I can just stick my screwdriver in there and adjust it. But you can see these ones here don't need that uh, because you can actually uh, adjust those from the top. If you flip it over here, you'll notice that uh, those pots down in there these ones down here, these uh, 
these brown ones down in there, they can all be adjusted, uh, but the ones that are fouled by this top board here, they will have the um, cutout on the bottom of it. I love it. And these warnings you really have to take heed of. We're on the um, uh, CRT here, and there's a seven kilovolt anode voltage. And really, this is the dangerous shit inside oscilloscopes. And you do not want to touch it unless you know exactly what you're doing. So you do not want to touch this. You don't want to disconnect that unless you know what you're doing. You've got experience in doing that. And uh, the anode lead goes all the way over here. And curiously, um, it is actually connected well, it's, it's not connected, but it's um, just held down there with a, with a plastic retaining clip on the vertical board. But uh, that one goes through here onto the high, into the high voltage circuitry under there. And you don't want to play around with that sort of stuff. You can kill yourself. And there's your voltage multiplier in there, which generates your, uh, your 7 kilovolts uh, for the CRT. And that comes from uh, a mains... A vertical the vertical mains board in here that's why they've got the big plastic cover on it with all the warning uh, stickers and really anything in this area you don't want to uh, poke around with unless you absolutely know what you're doing and again there's more warnings down in there on those high voltage capacitors down in there discharge before touching terminals and you'd better heat it and we've got some power resistors here coupled into uh, heat sinks which are then coupled into the chassis here and at the back as well for power dissipation and you see that uh, in quite a few places and you can see it here as well uh, these uh, transistors or regulators or whatever they are are connected to their own heatsink and they were the two uh, screws that we saw on the back side of the case so that's uh, designed to couple the heat into the case as well as well as actually retaining the uh, heatsink and stopping it uh, vibrating uh, off and things like that because if you left that larger heatsink just uh, standing there uh, vertical like that you would get all sorts of uh, resonant uh, modes when you transport it and when you vibrate the instrument if you got on a trolley or something like that and um, it can just start uh, snap off and ruin your day now if we take a look at the uh, vertical board here as you can see these are the two uh, vertical uh, channels here this is the horizontal uh, ganged switch we've got here these holes in there there's actually uh, pots down in there. So there's little um, trimmer or well, caps actually uh, trimmer caps that's for the uh, attenuation compensation for each channel so you can get in there and adjust uh, the compensation for the um, for the voltage for the input voltage divider and then they've got a uh, pot as well which is linked through to the control on the front because the control is not only a uh, switch but um, it's also a it, it's also got a rotary pot on there you probably can't see it but there's the pot at the back there you can see it turn in when I rotate the switch on the front and uh, the rest of it is um, all a, a ganged uh, switch in there so it's a totally custom uh, thing so if something like that fails well you know you have to try and repair the contacts or something like that or you have to get a new board and uh, salvage it get a scrapped uh, unit with a working channel or something like that but these are the sort of things you can actually repair the contacts in if you really want to go to the effort and uh, take them apart and things like that there's various techniques you can use and there's the horizontal uh, ganged switch and if you look carefully in there you can actually see the multiple uh, channels because there are um, quite a lot of channels inside there and I love the click that 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 nice click mechanism it's showing the verticals I'm moving the verticals and they have like a spongy feel to them but uh, the uh, horizontal um, time base ganged switch there really nice custom mechanism but once again you know if it fails you might have to um, take apart these uh, sandwiched uh, contacts or something like that and maybe uh, re-surface uh, them or lubricate them and once again it's got a trim pot on the back here and if I turn the um, center horizontal you can see that uh, that mechanism in there um, turns the turns the pot so it's you know it's fairly basic stuff but there's a lot of um, effort goes into actually designing a custom ganged switch like that and there's something you don't see every day, made in Holland. Beautiful. <laughs> Copyright Tektronics 1986. So at least this uh, top, this uh, vertical uh, attenuator and time base board is made in Holland. I'm not sure of the uh, rest of it, but uh, this board is at the very least, or maybe the entire ma scope is manufactured in Holland. I don't know. But uh, there we go. Copyright 1986. So we have a, um, a reference uh, point for the manufacturer of this 
thing, I'm not sure how old this scope was. It would have had a, uh, a decent uh, product uh, lifetime of five plus years or something like that. And perhaps a um, after thought here. They've got some uh, decoupling uh, on this particular chip. And once again, it's duplicated on uh, both uh, channel so uh, maybe um, an afterthought I don't know or maybe they it was so it was so critical that they had to get the cap directly on the pins of the device who knows but it's well done in either case it's uh, actually well formed and well soldered it doesn't look like it's been hacked on there's a rather unusual looking uh, trimmer cap there I can't say I've uh, seen one that looks exactly like that before it's rather unusual and this one up here for channel one is actually been uh, bent at about 45 degrees. Now I'm not sure if that's an afterthought because it uh, could have fouled this uh, focus control rod here. But um, yeah, it looks like it's been bent on purpose. And the CRT itself made in USA, USA, USA. And if you're wondering what this big uh, coil of uh, wire is over here, that's actually a a delay line it uh, runs from down here and it goes whoop, around the CRT a couple of times because well it's just convenient to do that I guess and goes into the back part of the board here and you can see the structure of the delay line like that it's like a plastic uh, tube with the wires wrapped around inside there some more attention to detail to make the adjustments um, uh, accessible to the user. These uh, trim pots here are vertical, of course, because this is the CRT here. This is right over the top. And this little uh, trimmer cap there, they've actually bent that at 45 degrees so that you can access it. I like it. A bit of a bodge here. They've got these two uh, toroidal core inductors here with a series resistor. They've lifted up one side of the of the inductor and they've actually um, put a series resistor in there go figure now on the front panel uh, PCB here they don't really have any uh, high frequency or uh, critical stuff at all it's just you know controls like you know uh, vertical adjust and horizontal position adjust and uh, stuff like that everything else um, the uh, actual um, uh, signals uh, themselves go directly into these uh, cans and we'll be able to should be able to see that um, on the bottom there, they might have a little bit of uh, trigger stuff going through here, but generally speaking, it's going to go uh, straight into something like this uh, shielded can, especially when you're trying to get 500 microvolts per division, which this scope is capable of. Now, here's the channel 1 and the channel 2 input B and C connectors, and you'll see that they actually go uh, straight over here. They're, they're actually discrete uh, wired with these flying resistors here, straight over into the uh, AC-DC selection switch in there, which is directly on the front panel down in there. As you can see, there's the AC coupling cap, and then it goes directly through a, a, um, a uh, shielded, shielded penetrator uh, pin there which actually penetrates that metal shield down in there which is the main input uh, amplifier so it basically is just the um, AC uh, DC DC coupling selection bang straight in now although the BNC itself is actually um, earthed to the front panel because uh, all scopes like this are mains uh, earth reference very uh, dangerous if you don't know what you're doing when you're taking measurements you can blow the crap out of your probes and or your scope but anyway they've taken and they've taken an additional uh, grounding a fairly um, heavy grounding uh, strap there probably up under there uh, directly as a more of a direct um, a lower inductance lower impedance uh, path directly into the vertical Amplifier, they're not just going to rely on the chassis return um, because that would be uh, that that would provide very poor uh, high frequency performance. And there is one other uh, rod in this I forgot to mention, but the uh, mechanical power switch here on the front actually goes back via this uh, black rod, which you see uh, going back here. It goes back into the um, mains input board. There's a green. You probably can't see it, but there's a uh, green. Uh, power main switch right down on that vertical mains input board and on top of the CRT here wedged between the top of it and uh, the top uh, inside of the um, front panel here is a little uh, spring and that would take out any uh, vibration response um, during uh, shipping and handling and things like that just so you don't damage the CRT now it's time to calibrate this sucker because if you remembered when I actually uh, did an incoming inspection on this when I bought it, um, 
it was uh, slightly uh, reading slightly low on all that consistently low on both channel one and channel two uh, vertical it was out by I don't know ten percent or something it was quite significant um, so I just wanted to tweak that up and I think the horizontal was uh, slightly out as well so I wanted to tweak that so um, I've got the service uh, manual for it um, because that's the best way to do it you don't want to have to um, because you've seen the number of trim pots in this things it's got you know a dozen plus uh, trim pots and you don't just want to uh, guess which one it is you've got to know exactly which one it is because there's so many adjustment uh, controls on this there's a uh, uh, balance and offset and and gain and all sorts of things and and really you don't want to muck around with them um, unless especially if every all the others are in cow you don't want to dig around on them so it's best to find the exact control so the service manual says um, R145 um, adjustment pot is the one to use for the vertical uh, gain and that's all I'm interested in so I had a look around inside here and um, I'm buggered if I could find R145. <laughs> so I had to actually admit defeat and uh, scroll through the service manual here and actually find it's got uh, adjustment locations for the where all the pots are and I thought it would be on the vertical board but it's not. It's actually on the main board R145 and R195 I think it is is the other one for channel 2 and they're actually under the uh, CRT so let's go find it. Well, go figure, there they are tucked under there. We've, so we looked at those before, um, and that would have been my last guess, literally, for where the um, vertical gain uh, amplifier adjustment pots would be. I thought they'd be on the top here in the, uh, on the vertical board where there's a whole bunch of uh, pots on there, but no, as it turns out, they're it. In this case, um, R195. Um, Sorry, R, what is it? Uh, yeah, R195 there for channel 2, and this one under here, channel 1. So let's play around with it and see if we can tweak it. Just one thing to remember, when you are moving these things around uh, when they're powered up, just remember there can be some dangerous voltages in there, even though, um, you know, it really sort of protects you from the dumb stuff here. But, you know, you want to keep away from the CRT and that sort of stuff, and really it's always uh, safety first. The service manual recommends using a 20 millivolt uh, peak to peak um, sine wave. It doesn't uh, say it doesn't recommend the uh, frequency, so I'm using one kilohertz using my um, Tektronix 3000 series scope here to generate that. And uh, as you can see, 20 millivolts. Um, I would have actually, which is only four divisions on a scope, I would have actually much preferred to do eight divisions. Anyway, um, that's what it says to use. So we'll just use that for starters and uh, see how we go. So I fed that into the uh, scope via a 50 ohm um, terminator is on the end here and let's see if we can adjust that, um, tweak that pot on the side to uh, get our, to get the exact level or pretty close to it. Now when you're adjusting uh, scopes like this, get yourself one of these insulated uh, adjustment tools. They're a uh, low reactive um, adjustment tool so that um, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it's not metallic of course. Um, so when you're reaching inside, probe it around, you're not going to kill yourself. And uh, B, it doesn't actually add any capacitance or reactive uh, components to uh, the um, sensitive. Sometimes if you've got little uh, trimmer caps or something like that, you can upset their value. So get one of these little alignment tools, they cost next to nothing. Okay, now what we want to do here is we want to, um, our input signal here, we want AC coupling, okay? First of all, we want to uh, ground it like this, and we want to get the position smack in the center. So we want to get smack on that center line like that, switch it to AC uh, coupling so that there's no um, offset issues or anything like that. And uh, as you can see, it's reading low. It should be four divisions um, because we're on five millivolts. Uh, per division on the times one because we're not using a uh, times 10 uh, probe here of course so I've got my adjustment uh, pot over there there it is and I'm going to uh, tweak it and as you can see with this alignment tool my hand looks like it's inside the scope but it's not it's actually all the way outside it allows me to adjust that um, uh, trim pot without um, any danger at all so we uh, tweak that up to, ah, oh, it's, maybe the position is, uh, yeah, the position is slightly off. There we go. Let's put it back, and you just want it so that the top of the waveform there just touches the, those four divisions. So there we go, four divisions, peak to peak. And I set my generator for 40 millivolts peak to peak, and what do you know, it is spot on as well. 
and we've uh, checked out this before but we'll just uh, double check we'll turn it up to 10 millivolts per division and it's smack on uh, four divisions there for 40 millivolts and then 20 obviously is two but let's uh, go up to a higher level and uh, see if we can and see if that's spot on as well okay in this case I've got it set to 800 millivolts uh, peak to peak on my generator and there you go it's um, pretty darn close to uh, spot on I like it there you go that's eight divisions perfect and let's do the same thing with channel 2 so we'll plug it in there we'll switch over to uh, channel 2 and we need to uh, trigger from channel 2 of course and let's do the same thing we'll ground that we'll take the position up and we'll AC couple that and as you can see it's uh, short there you go so we have to adjust the trim part let me get in there and eh, tweak that now of course we could have done this back down at um, 20 millivolts as they claim in the manual but eh, we'll do it at that and that's perfect spot on channel 2 is done now let's take a look at the horizontal here and see if we can adjust that so if we go up here we've got uh, adjustment uh, procedures here and we've done the vertical and uh, there's various things for the vertical by the way um, you can have a look at the uh, service manuals for these type of scopes as well but there's all sorts of um, stuff there's uh, balance adjustments there's inverse balance adjustments there's gain adjustments there's offset adjustments all for you know very uh tricky there's lots of them so if you muck around with them you can really um screw the thing up so let's go here to the adjustment procedures and we'll go into the uh, horizontal here and uh find out which pot we need to do to adjust that so it's telling us to adjust uh for a one millisecond timing and the adjustment pot is r775 that's the one we need to find and bingo, it's on the uh, vertical horizontal board, go figure. And uh, there it is, R775 times 1 mag gain. So that's the one we need to tweak. And I spy with my little eye R775 there on the vertical board. So we'll tweak that and uh, try and get this uh, horizontal waveform to pull in. And I forgot to mention, of course, we've got to be on um, times one mode there because this scope has um, times five, uh, times ten, and times fifty mag as well. So they have uh, separate adjustment controls for the magnification, but the one that you would mostly use the scope in the uh, times one position. And I forgot to mention, before you do these adjustments, you've got to make sure that the uh, calibrated uh, uh, vernier control, the actual um, variable adjustment control for both the vertical and the horizontal is all the way into the cow position. Because if you have it um, pulled around, you know, if you have it out of cow like that, then you adjust it at the wrong point. So it's got to be around in the cow position. And there's usually like a uh, detent, um, a detent position at the end of that. And uh, also, um, you don't want your uh, times five, well, in this case, uh, times ten uh, vertical uh, mag on either. There we go. Uh, use the fine control here to adjust the waveform over like that, because as you move it, it will actually, um, and maybe, you know, if you leave it in the center, it should be fine. But there we go. It is spot on. I like it. And let's just uh, check that it's still okay in the mag position. I mean, uh, times 10 magnification down here. I mean, mag mode, you can put it in alt mode where you can get both uh, the waveforms up at once. But we'll put it there and uh, it should still be... Oh, it's slightly. It's slightly off. Ah, oh, half a bee's dick. But we can actually tweak that one too using um, R777, which is another control on the board here right at the back. So let me tweak that this is the times 10 mag control so there we go spot on just tweaked it just a tad perfect and times 5 mag mode here we're out on that one as well so luckily we have a pot for that it is uh time it is r731 so let's get in there and tweak that one as well here we go and bingo near enough to spot on i like it and just go back and check that they didn't uh, interact with each other times one we're spot on there if we go to mag times five yeah the uh, offset's a little bit out there the horizontal uh, offset that is but that's fine and times 10 mag beautiful i like it 
Yep, spot on. And we can go into times 50 as well. If you're really, uh, really pedantic. But there's no separate control for that. It uh, must use the other two. And it's pretty darn close. It's a little bit out, but uh, there is no adjustment control for that one. And we'll just do a few quick spot checks on the other horizontal uh, ranges. I've got a 100 kilohertz signal this time, and it is spot on. No problems uh, at all. And you can check the uh, mags again for that. And, uh, yep, just fine. So let's take it up in frequency and see what we can get. And using a 10 megahertz signal, once again, we're spot on at uh, times 5 mag gain. I've got it because this um, scope isn't particularly high bandwidth. Uh, on times 1 mode, that's as far as it goes, so I can't... Uh, get the uh, 10 divisions actually across there but uh, in any case um, we can turn on the times 5 mag and we are spot on beautiful I like it I think we've just uh, calibrated the horizontal and the vertical gain channels let's actually count the pots in this thing that I can see one two three under there four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 uh, two under the CRT um, over here, which we actually um, did. At, there's a bucket load of them, and there's ones on the bottom um, of the main board as well. More adjustment pots, you can poke a stick out. That's not even counting the um, uh, trimmer caps and things like that for all your uh, compensation adjustments. Crazy! Just imagine having to adjust these things at the factory when they first roll off the line and all the pots are at centre and all the trim pots are at centre or wherever and you've got to tweak the thing. Oh man, you go nuts. Now, when you're adjusting stuff like this, not just scopes, but any bit of electronics at all, the most important thing by far is the angle of your tongue. If you don't get it right, it's not going to work. Your adjustments are going to be completely out and Murphy will get you every time. Tongue angle number one. Watch, this is the correct technique. See? It's, it, 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 sometimes left, sometimes right. Varies between the individual, but trust me, super important. Catch you next time. I almost forgot the most crucial adjustments. You can't do them with two eyes. Must have one eye and the correct tongue angle. Let me demonstrate. 